And now, Freelance Heroism presents Dragon Heist. Hey everybody and welcome to Freelance Heroism. My name is Dees. And I'm Rachel. And before we even get started, we just want to say thank you to everyone out there who donates at the Patreon, in particular those who donate at the producer tier, Rachel! Yes. Would you like to let us know who they are? (laughs) I would love to. We want to say thank you to Duncan, Nate, Breakmeister, Rebecca, and Chris Sones. Thank you so much, everyone. Y'all motherfuckers are down, motherfuckers. <laughs> I just feel like doing voices all day today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, oh, not not that one. I won't do all the voices. Not mm-hmm. not this one. I stuck a shrimp in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Uh, okay. <laughs> Shrimp tail, meet me tail. Oh, no. So, you have some good news. I do. Um, some pretty fucking awesome news. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, for anyone that remembers from a few months ago, uh, I have really awful neighbors. They live on the same driveway as me, so they are just a constant pain in my side including their kid like crashing her bike into my car uh and doing hundreds of dollars of damage to it and then um the parents really not getting on top of uh (laughs) paying it um but yesterday uh i woke up and i could hear like this heavy thrumming of an engine and it sounded like it was right outside my door and they'll do this thing where they have like like a couple trucks yeah. and they'll do this thing where they'll wait like my house is at the end of the driveway right where it meets the road so they'll go down the driveway and just like rev their truck and then get to like where they need to turn onto the road and then they'll just kind of hang out there and rev their truck for a while I don't know what the point is I don't I don't understand what the point of it is so I woke up and I could hear it and I was like oh god they're doing it again but it like stayed and so finally i got up and i went over to to look out the window um and i was so tired because i'd been up really late the night before right (laughs) and i pulled back the curtain and there's a huge moving truck and they're packing their stuff into it they're finally leaving oh my god that must have felt amazing (laughs) it did must have felt like winning the super bowl so happy um and i kept like looking out the window and checking to make sure that they were still packing. <laughs> <laughs> They're not just getting rid of some of the stuff, right? It's all of it? It's all, once it's you all see of a, it. Once you see a couch, you're good. Yeah, they, I mean, it's like a really big moving truck. And yeah. they're definitely putting stuff in it. Good. Um, Tell them and, to take their diapers on their oh my God. porch, too. So gross. Porch diapers. That's a thing. Yeah. They they literally. Okay. So I want to tell this part of the story because it's gross. And I think that poop is my purview. (laughs) So um, Rachel tells me that her neighbors were changing diapers. And instead of throwing them out into the garbage can, they would just take them and throw them on the left side of their porch. Did I have that right? The left side? Yeah. Okay. So they would just throw them on the left side of their porch. I I imagine it's like sort of like a fence in an area. There's no fence. Oh, okay. So just a flat piece of stoop just just up at the top of the hill right and so they dump the diapers there while it's cold (laughs) the poop stays frozen frosty yep uh like like captain america in a glacier yeah like uh like northrend poop (laughs) the white walker white walker dumps are stored to the left Mm -hmm. and then as the seasons change yes and it gets warmer Uh uh-huh the scent emerges like daffodils over a spring hill (laughs) There's, yeah, there was a defrosting situation. Where, I don't know if you've ever microwaved. <laughs> a diaper? I have not. A, a poopy diaper. <laughs> I have but not. it's good to heat them up low and slow, <laughs> like you're cooking a roast. Uh, it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. And, like, I imagine that the scent, when it starts to do that, is fucking beyond reprehensible. Yeah. So. Luckily, where, like, how my house is positioned, the wind couldn't carry the scent to me but it carried it down the hill to these other neighbors oh no poo fumes and so every time they stepped outside of their house it was like a straight line like gross yeah yeah um they're 
horrible. They had like this big aggressive dog for a while that they would just like let loose around the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, and it actually like bit a neighbor when she was in her yard gardening. Um, and it was like really aggressive towards me and it would like like lunge at me when I would go out to get my mail out of the mailbox, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they like leave you, feel, their... you feel bad for the dog in that situation yeah. because the, the, the person whose dog it is should be taken care of. It yeah, totally. And they were like talked to multiple times and the landlord even offered to help them set up a fence for the dog. Right. And they just well, I mean, didn't want to do it. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. feel any sympathy for him. No. Because, you know, fuck off or whatever. But <laughs> The kid trying to break in your house multiple times and then not correcting her is mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, that, crazy to me. That would happen. Um, they would like leave their garbage bags out, but not in the bin. Like they would leave the garbage bags outside of the bin, like days before garbage pickup. So by the time the garbage man came, uh, like raccoons and birds and stuff had ripped open their bags of garbage. Which guess what? There are more diapers, diapers. in there. <laughs> spread them out. And... It's, sort of like, it's sort of like nature, you know, like the pollinization <laughs> of the poopy diapers. But the thing is, like, the garbage bin, it's next to the road, so it's closest to my house. So, so when I like look at my window, so, yeah, so it looks like I did it. And that means that whenever I would step out of my house, oh, look, my yard is full of strewn garbage that they would never pick up. Everyone knows Rachel loves <laughs> to throw trash across her yard. It's her favorite thing. <laughs> you know that spring is here. Mm-hmm. When the ducks throw shitty diapers across <laughs> the landscape. That is duck slander, and I will not stand for it. <laughs> is it rabbit season or duck season? <laughs> Are there shitty diapers everywhere? <laughs> yes. Duck season. So this this is how invested I am in these people leaving. When the uh, moving truck finally uh, pulled out of the driveway, first of all, I took a picture and I sent it to our group chat. <laughs> and then I timed it. And four hours later, they came back, I guess, to pack up the rest of their stuff. So wherever they're going, it takes them four hours to get there, unpack their stuff, and come back. That's good. Yeah. So uh, I would assume they they got back, and it was already dark, and it was snowing because it will never truly be spring here. Uh. And... um, so they didn't they didn't leave again last night. The truck is still there, but they have it pulled up closer to the house. So I assume they're packing up the rest of the stuff today. Um, well, the little girl has to come sift through your things and <laughs> have to decide what they're taking with them. Like look in my windows. Yeah. And and then give me commentary on like my cats. Yeah, they can stretch out a couple more days uh, to see how many Amazon packages I can get in there. <laughs> I remember all the stories about these people suck so bad that Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. I really am. Thank you. It's a hugely awesome thing. I'm so happy that they're leaving finally. Uh Uh, That's my good. It's been a pretty good couple of months for me. Uh, So, yeah. Fingers crossed. I don't have something horrible happen soon. You're going to get that (laughs) D-sluck. Oh, no. Get that (laughs) D-sluck. Uh. All right. Well, I think we should go ahead and get to this week's episode. Let's do it. All right. What's it called? What's it called, Rachel? This is Dragon Heist episode 49, Pack Tactics. Pack Tactics. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. That's fine. It's a okay. fine episode title. Okay. It's Five because you don't remember picking this name for it. Is that why you're... I don't think I did. You sure? I don't know. Unless it's a pun that I don't get. I think you're gonna have to listen to the episode, and find out. I don't think uh, I don't think Pack Tactics is mine. I it might be. Is it spelled P A Q U E? <laughs> is there like a weird? <laughs> is there like a weird thing I'm not saying? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah. Is it Pack TikToks? No. Did I get it wrong? Okay, I'm just making. I'm just look. I'm just looking for an angle here. Pack tactic seems like a phrase, not like a pun. Maybe I'm wrong. You're wrong. Okay, good. Okay. All right. <laughs> nice. It's probably something a backpack or something. <laughs> so his AC is now appropriately a. 
11, no, a 12, because he's lost his dexterity. There's okay. no fucking way this guy who is using a dex for his armor class is has any chance of that being affected. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the second roll was a twenty three, so oh. I think uh, I think I just pinned him through both shoulders. Um, okay, so damage on the first dagger. No, that's a d twenty. That was the wrong dice to roll. Did you give him the butterfly boy? Yeah, you pin him the corkboard. Yep. Uh, okay, so five points of damage on the first, and then the other is just a straight up one. All right. Right? That's the one that he could have used on Rachel. It didn't. So, it didn't. okay, what was the damage of the first one? Five and then one. All right. Sounds good. And not death, dead the, yet, yeah. not close to being dead yet, but definitely hurting. If the desk wasn't and, the way, well, the desk is. Yeah, he's now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's good. I, um, I'm done. How much. Dewalk, how much damage did the wall take from Rachel? All 22 total. How much? 22 total. Oh. And how much do we establish that? How's the wall looking, Dewalk? Is I think the I, I established team. earlier that it was third. I was going to give the wall 30 HP. Okay. Okay. So the wall, it, it is it is not in its best day. It does not look like it would stand much. Um, Dewalk, whose turn is it now? Uh. I already know the answer to this question, but go ahead and go ahead and think it over. Um, we are in the twelve, so we are on the um one of the veterans that was with the, the guard that was with Anders. Oh yeah, I forgot they were here. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anders burst through the wall. Oh, that would be no. rad. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> um, also, that guy that I that I acided, but he wiped it off. Yeah. So. <laughs> he wipes his face and his hands in his face and it screams in his hand. Ah! <laughs> That's he a misses... very Warner Brothers cartoon. Uh, uh, he misses. And then it is um, the one that's in shock is <laughs> I can't imagine it's any better now. No, he's still jacked up. Um, and <laughs> then yeah. Ever... Remember Ace Ventura when he got the spear in his leg? That's what I'm imagining this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Anders misses, and we are back to the top of the round. Um, at this point, the banging on the other side of the wall stopped. <laughs> and now it's you, writhing. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the fire is now catching to the door. The oil is there. Um you can hear voices on the other side. Um, pretty much, you hear a deeper, a, de- a deeper voice has now um, shown up on the other side of the door. Uh, he's like, "If we can't get them out, we got to vacate the house. We have to clear it. We got to clear upstairs. Those are guards that came in, kill the prisoners." But we didn't start and the they, fire. It was always burning. So um, you're, you guys do hear him specifically. Kill the prisoners. Clear the shrine. And then to the sewers. Wait a minute. Do I hear him say kill the prisoners? Uh, yes. Fuck. Fuck. Sorry, this guys. This is my DM happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> How bad does the fire on the door look? Nothing a thunder wave can handle. <laughs> that would be my last thunder or a, wave. Or a giant shielding, marauding doctor that just likes to Kool-Aid man things. Um, It, it is Urstel's. He takes is, acid damage. Yes, he does take acid damage. He takes five acid damage. Poor unfortunate soul. All right. He's burning. At this point, he's with his hands bloodied. He's trying to wipe the acid off that he can and pulls bonus action to pull the handkerchief out of his mouth. (laughs) With what hands? 
with what's left of the fingers on one hand. With his weird split ET yeah. fingers. His sausage fingers. He yeah. tries to use like both his hands to like just like push them together and pull. pull oh, that's just, so gross. Looks at the he kind of now he's trying to focus on the room, looks at the wall, looks at you guys. I swear one day I will kill you. I told you 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 could have laid down. If I could get my middle finger up, that's missing. <laughs> I'd use it. <laughs> and it is uh, acid crossbowman too. Doorknob in the ass. Long swordsman. Okie doke. What it says? Fucking brilliant move. <laughs> Well, most likely he's going to die here since he's at 30 HP and he only has 32 once she gets the acid roll. But wait a minute. No, he wiped the ass off last round, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, and you got the heavy shield in front of you, right? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Shit. Well, fuck. Right? Oh, shit. But he could. No. Shit. Uh, <laughs> sounds like me playing Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> and he rolls. Oh, nice. 19 plus 23, um, which I pretty sure does not clear that tower shield of yours. No, it does. It's totally 23. Yeah, he rolled a 19 plus uh, four in his attack. Yeah, I have a 22 armor class, and Rachel didn't give me the plus one today. So, okay. I did. Oh, well, then it hits my armor class. Okay, well, then it still hits. All right. Oh, wow. You actually take five damage from him. He is able to get his weapon around you. With I'm going to say, with you focusing between the wall and the door, and now you knowing the prisoner lives at risk. You're not fully paying attention to the guy that should be dead. In all fairness, he did five damage. I'm not really paying attention to him now. <laughs> I mean, this guy's kind of like the least damaging thing going on in this room. Right. All right, so you guys can edit this out, but this is my two lines of thinking, right? My first line of thinking is if we, because the plan was to get us all out through the door, right? So yeah. I have your guys' lives to consider with my next action, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I heard that there are prisoners. I assumed that once we went out through the door or through the wall, I could run back downstairs and get that guy we put in the case out. I didn't realize there were other people here. So now the timing is looking a little tight. Uh -huh. You still have a thunder wave that you can knock the rest of this door down easily with. Yes, but that would be my last spell. Right, but you could do it. Yeah. And that would allow me to charge back through the door, through the fire, to go find where the prisoners are before they kill them. Mm -hmm. So I know that you guys are capable and have an out. In my head, this is this is probably why the guy hit me because I was I was distracted thinking about what the move was. I can't not go back for those people. It just is not in me. It's just whether or not it's faster to go out through the door and then come back in through the first floor or to charge through the door, grab one of those people and ask where the prisoners are. Can I offer a rebuttal? Yes. I'm means. a water genasi, correct? Absolutely. But the fire it's is still... It's a grease fire. It's still working a good effect i don't want to get rid of the fire it's still doing okay. its job i was because i was going to say yeah i mean it is a grease fire that is true but i mean i can can create water i'm just i'm curious <laughs> well now here's the thing create or destroy water specifically says you water can fall as rain in a 30 foot cube within range extinguishing exposed flames in the area but not what? a grease fire or oh. oil fire. Mm. Think about it like when oil no, no, spills I, in the ocean and catches. Oh, no, no, no. I, as a chemist, I completely understand. It's just the the rules say exposed flames. It doesn't say exposed flames of a certain type. It doesn't say what the incendiary device is. So, yeah. 
I don't know. I mean, I that's maybe being a bit pedantic, but I well, I could make the argument that if we wanted to put that fire out in a hurry, I could do so. Yeah, I would ask David. Also, I uh, mean, David's it's, here. Hello. I mean, the fire would it wouldn't be like the oil would be a surface fire on like. This is all irrelevant. My point is, well, we, it's not irrelevant if the decision goes that way. But I'm not certain yet whether, which way. Well, it, okay. Do you go before rain? Yes. Okay, then. My point, that, yeah, it doesn't. I do, I could delay action, but I wouldn't here. Yeah. Ah, shit. I'm just thinking, is it smarter to do both the thing that helps you guys and then try to get back downstairs? or we're already downstairs no i mean around to the front side of the building oh or do i as prisoners i i, as... I think it's a dilemma that you and you alone have to make the decision on i think that's part of the drama of it which i think i which i like but if i kick the door down not only do i leave a guy here behind you i also open the door to allow those guys in Okay. Maybe I can kill three birds with one stone. Okay. Z-Walk, are you back? Yes, sir. How strong does the guy standing in front of me look? The guy who attacked me. Um, He's looking pretty jacked up. He's on the... Uh... No, no, not, not that I mean physically. Like, is he a tough looking guy? Like muscly or is he more like... Oh, uh, a... yeah. I mean, he, he's a built dude. Um, he's definitely um, has his share of prison tats. He, he's definitely on the weaker side. Right. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to have to risk it, I think. All right. I'm going to make an athletics attempt to grapple him. Okay. Thirteen on his side. Twenty-three. Nice. Uh, eight. There's eighteen plus five, by the way. Uh, so not a nat. Uh, grab him by his, I guess by his collar, and then run as fast as I can at the wall like a charge, like a bull rush. The outside wall. The back wall of the building. Okay. The one that had been thunder waved a bunch. I'm going to run in it as hard as I can and use his body like my shield. Damn. All right. Give uh, me a uh, strength check. I did. I, oh, I got a 23 for the, um, for the athletics, right? To grapple him. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying a, chink, a strength check against the wall, pretty much, or uh, an attack on the wall, per se. Remember I said it's going to be weird. Yeah. It's 23 again. But this time it's twenty plus three, not okay. So you actually crit. I, so, yeah. You crit with the body. No, I trust through you. the through the door or through the wall, if I can. I had anyway. eight <laughs> hit points, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, what's the damage on a bandit? What kind of damage do they? I know their weapons do one d six, but what kind of damage do they do? I was gonna give you, um. Um, normally 1d6 with the body. Um, do I double the die damage of a Yes, person? you do because you crit it. Um, I, I did this back, but I did this back under um, um, this rule was established back in the original uh, Ravenloft where a certain character smited with the vampire as a weapon. Right. And um, Still upset they didn't swing the goat around on the chain. That was where I was, I was hoping <laughs> that was going to work. So, but, um, yeah, no, um, but how many, uh, you would have traveled a good 20 feet too. So still another 10 feet in my movement, right? Yeah. Uh, 46. Okay. Uh, hold on. I got to type this in. Plus strength. Oh, God damn it. Do well. okay, so well, nine on the damage total. Uh, yeah, I had one, one, four, and one, or one, Ooh. one, whatever, and one. 
Um, yeah, you go uh, through the wall though. You you put a man sized shape through the wall. Plus three <laughs> for the strength. All right. Um, can I yell "Oh yeah" as we go through? Please, you you get an extra two feet around for the "Oh yeah." Okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna go through the the thing, the wall, with him, and hit the other guy with him as I go through. Right. Um, if you're planning, if you want to run him through Ursul, it, it'd be kind of a because you still got to go over the desk to hit Ursul. I'm jumping the desk because I'm going to dive, but then, yeah, that's still fine. Standing. Um, yeah, yeah, you you hit him with Ursul, all three of you go through the wall. Fucking awesome. Okay, as soon as I have a turn, I'm going to move as quickly as I can. Uh, I, I'm assuming I have to get prone or I get oh, standing next turn. Yeah. Um, I probably take you, fall damage. You, you got about, you still have about 10 feet of movement. Um, I'm, there's no way I can continue moving after this. Yeah. I just went through a wall and tumbled. So, yeah, you're, you're in a kind of a mess outside with the other two. Okay. Um, and the nine damage plus three. Yeah, um, you killed the one guy. He only had two HP left. Which guy? The uh, oh, the guy I used as a weapon, right? Yeah. Um, and then Urstel. They'll take the same damage as the wall did. You said that was twelve total. Yeah, nine plus uh, three. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, Adrian, your turn. You just saw Kavir Kool Aid mend the wall and pushed all three of them through. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I don't want to mess with the door. Can I uh look around quickly and see if there's anything like of value that we should grab? Thank you. Uh, yes, in the old library, there is a book. Um, it's uh, leather bound, hand stitched. It's off. It was it was on Ursula's desk. It's now kind of on the floor because of the fight. Do you um, want quick, where was that book originally located? On the desk. No, I mean before before the desk. You said it was from where? It is a old leather book. Um. Um, it is looks like it's been hand bound, like the uh, the, um, the leather straps were right. But where do they keep books? Oh my god, like god damn it! <laughs> I just want you to say it again to watch Rachel's face wince when you say library. Library, thank you. Sorry, I, just um, I know I, it's and I don't mean it on purpose, right. I wish you did. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you see um another book in there that has um draconic writing on it. On the what the hell is it called the the back of it the can you help me out here? You talking about the what the dust jacket? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> I play with dirt all day. I don't deal with stuff that normal people deal with. <laughs> I shovel rocks. The asphalt jacket. Which really pisses me off because I've been bugging my boss for fucking years to teach me this certain formula so I can calculate voids mineral aggregate. And motherfucker never said it was in my MS2 book fucking page 54 because I fucking paid like $1,800 <laughs> or the company paid $1,800 to send my ass out to Kentucky for them just to tell me, oh no, it's in your MS2. And I'm like, you sons of bitches. Wow. For years, this guy's held on to this fucking secret and like nobody could calculate but him. And I'm like, guess what, bitch? You're on vacation now and I just take your power. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love, it's like, you just said that you work with dirt. It's like, I need your dirt recipe. <laughs> Give me your recipe for dirt. Uh, okay. I wish I could tell you all well, dirt was created equal, but it's not. So is this a so is this the same book? 
they two different books. Two different books. Okay. Yes. I'd like to grab both of them and put them in my backpack. There is also in the corner a covered mirror um, <gasps> with a gold trim and green minerals around it. It stands about body height tall off in the corner. And there is also on the wall a painted gold mask. We don't like mirrors around these parts. Well, I don't think I can take the mirror. Uh, but I will definitely grab both the books and the mask. You do notice the mirror is actually broken. Oh. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't think I can. I don't think I can grab two books and a mask and also the mirror in the same round. <laughs> no, but you, you make your way quickly around the room and picked up the pick up the yeah, two I books and putting it in my bag. You do notice that the the leather bound book. Um, you're pretty sure there's a devil carved into the cover of it, mm-hmm. and. The language that you see on the cover. Um, do you speak Infernal? No. Uh, you don't recognize it, but it does not look like a friendly language. Okay. Going in the If bag. only you knew a person that might know something about that. So, yeah, but they have and... to be willing to like actually talk about it. So, so I'm not asking you. I don't know. Maybe you can find something at the library. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, already. Um. Is there anything else Adrian's going to do this turn? Um, I, I would assume that takes up most of my turn is to grab all that stuff. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't want to go through the door that's on fire (laughs) and I want to kind of see like what, uh, Kavir meets, uh, you know, now that he's like busted out of the wall to, you know, make sure it's, it's safe for for me to come out. So I'm just going to grab this stuff and kind of take note of the mirror and maybe look around to see if there's like a good way that we can take that as well before like the griffin guard who i assume are somewhere within 300 feet and heard my thunder wave yeah your thunder wave was a lot louder than that fireball that went off down the street from your guys's place yeah maybe i can very quickly label it and be like oh this was stolen from adri light <laughs> and like oh thank you for returning my property that is a very clever move. I had never even considered <laughs> doing that. That's a very clever way to steal something. To make it think it was stolen. From, that's awesome. So you're, are you actually going to put your name on the back of it and everything and label it yours? Can I? What? Very quickly. Uh, I have... I, you I have, have a bonus action still. I mean... I have, I have calligrapher supplies. I am... Uh, I am it, it, actually proficient with calligraphy. I can make a very official looking label. I, I got no issue. Back. All right, it that's what I found. Do. Return to. <laughs> yeah, they left that off when they stole it. By the way, the, um, Nate, this no, no, is what uh, you see on. her doing. You have to let her. You have to let her explain exactly what the note says. I have to know how she's going to play this. Okay. Oh no, no, me too. This is awesome. So, um, okay, so so Adri is like running around grabbing all these books. She grabs a gold mask off the wall, and that also goes in, in her backpack. And she sees this mirror and then she like digs through her bag and takes out a calligraphy set and some really nice paper. And she's like, like writing in like fancy elvish calligraphy. And then um, I'm just going to use, uh, what do I have? I have, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, pour out a little bit of that armor sludge that uh, I got from Kavir because I'm sure it's kind of like sticky and I'm just going to slap it on the back of the mirror and then I'm going to slap the label on top of that. That mirror is going to be brand new when you're done with it. 
armor slip. What does the uh, note say? Uh, so in Elvish, uh, it says um, to <laughs> to my niece Adri, happy birthday. Uh, love you forever. All right. Very good. I was so curious what, the way she was going to go. I'm actually making sure I write this down exactly. I feel like Aunt Rislin would approve. I think she just outroke the rogue. Or at least, or at least she would not disapprove. <laughs> the rogue in the room is like, wait, 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 wait. I'm my look, job. I'm look back at Rain and be like, hey. You look over at me and I could not have one eyebrow arched any more if it he's did, got, it would be on the back of my head. Like, he's got that Captain Crunch eyebrow. It's way up on his hat. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh, put, putting my backpack back on. Are you are you done over there? I look making some moves. All right. How, <laughs> how about we make some moves to get the hell out of here? All right. I think all I right. broke my clavicle. <laughs> so that's 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 all of Andrew's turn. Rain, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, he writes another note and sticks it on top. <laughs> Dare you? Uh, okay, so we've got a hole through the wall, right? Yes. Uh, where, where, is, where are my daggers? Are they still lodged inside? Um, the, they're in Erstal? Yeah, they're technically inside him. Yeah, and there are some chunks of the wall probably still pinned to him. <laughs> And he's on the ground now? He's on the ground, tangled up with two of the dudes. Hey, yo. <laughs> I'm staring daggers at him. You know what I mean? <laughs> what do I want to do here? Um... He's got to be near death at this point uh and then we've got a fire still growing over on the other side um prisoners that are going to be executed right and i've seen well i think we all heard the guy behind the yeah we all heard yeah we all heard it so so he went through the wall is he still on the ground or where he went you guys are he's on the ground outside Okay, so okay, so there are a bunch so, of people on the ground. Um, kicking video back for a second. <sighs> you all have clinked here. Okay. So you guys are now on the outside. These are the front doors you guys came in. Yeah. Here's the back door. Adri came in with Kavir. Right. And y'all are out here now. Okay. You guys know there's a set of stairs here that you guys passed. That it'll go up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you guys almost found the other set of stairs over here when you guys were moving around here, but all right. I don't I uh, uh, yeah. okay. All right. Well I guess I'm going to yank both my daggers out of his shoulders. All right, you go through the hole. You gank them both. He screams out in pain again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Kick him in the crotch for good measure. And then uh, <laughs> I've heard. I know. Well, so all I heard, all I heard was the prisoners. Right. Do, um, I, do kill- I know? That, do I know that they're upstairs? Do I know where they are at all? Um. You, do you? When you came in, you guys were taken immediately to him in the, um, the old book area. Right. And if you're saying the name wrong again, um, you haven't, you do know the stairs upstairs. Um, you know, you guys don't know if they're upstairs I or downstairs yet. Anything. Okay. Um, Adrian and Kavir have been on the far side of the place and they've seen the kitchen and a washroom and servants' rooms and they saw a weapons room. Yeah, but I wouldn't so, know any of that. Um, no. You could ask. I'm on the floor right now. Yeah, that's what. Well, that's exactly what I was. I was. I was actually. I was going to shout to you. You um, you know, you go high and I'll go low, and I'll, I'll run into 
another portion of the house and I'll just start tearing through rooms on the, on the bottom story. Sounds good. And that's what I do. Oh, wait, wait. You said we, we didn't check all the bot. Is there a basement? Um, there's not a basement that you know of. Um, but, but they, they did, did say, say they could go, go to, to the, the sewer. sewer. So there is somewhere that does leads down below somewhere. But you guys hadn't checked all the rooms on the first floor. No. Right? no, no. Okay. But I'm going to tell them which ones we had. I'm kind of explaining to them how we got in, like as we're both heading in that direction. So you guys are heading back down and come back in through the weapons room, through the back. Which one's faster? Is, are we closer to? It, you're, you're, it's about, you guys are about the same on both sides. Okay. Either well, you then, guys yeah, run up way. and around to the front again, or you run all the way back around to the back. To we'll the back do that way because that, that way I'll pass by the other guy who we put it away. Okay. All right. Um, um, plus, before, before, before we leave, I want to stomp down. He's got those daggers in his shoulder, right? Um, I yanked him out. He yanked him out. Shit. All right. Well, then I'm going to, I guess, take my, uh, one of my javelins, pin him back down through the shoulder again. All right. He's really fucked up, so I don't know if he's going to yeah. be capable. Um, and we're going to go free play for the moment at this point until you guys get back into the place. Okay. Um, so Anders. Able, Anders and the guard will actually take um, Erstel into custody at this yeah. point. Oh, okay. Well, fuck it. Hey, you can't use ha- handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> they're like well right out. his thumbs are still on it's just his fingers are all screwed up gonna yeah but say, it's gonna fall he'll just fold them in half like a taco and pull uh, them out uh, you know he'll fold them hot dog or a hamburger they, they don't fit. actually have uh shackles on them right now but um he does them, have I'll, rope i have shackles i have a second pair i'll toss him my second pair for the leggings like you do anders looks over at you you just prepare for everything that's what i do you should see my sheet. It's crazy. Yeah. So they start locking up Erstel. Um, the other one, yeah, he's dead. All right, we got to go check for prisoners. I'm gonna rush with. Uh, okay. Yeah. With Rain. Um. All right, Age. Um, Age, are you following them? Yeah. All right. So the three of you make it all the way around to the back. Um, to the weapons room door that you guys I believe you guys closed it behind you yeah we did but it is not locked as it was before so plus you have the keys of that yeah, key. so all right as we go in all right um yeah you guys enter the weapons room the two chests on the floor the two beautiful full plates there on the wall the room is still full with swords, shields, spears, javelins, crossbows. The, you, this is definitely their armory. I'm going to hit my hand on the top of one of the, the cases and be like, he needs to go outside. Somebody grab him and take him out. I'm going to run to the upstairs as quick as I can. I know they'll do the right thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will. I will stay behind. Because to Nate was going to go downstairs, right? I was going to stay downstairs, yeah. Okay. And search whatever rooms you guys had. Well, I mean, you can leave him here if the fire's not bad, but just get him before you leave. Don't leave him in here. You know what? Just put him in one of those bodies of armor that Rachel's <laughs> been eyeballing. She'll make sure he gets out. <laughs> so, um, the only thing lit on fire right now is the door on the other side, and it's um, by this point probably has moved to part of the wall over there um, as you reach the main hallway you um, see four of um, Zent thugs in the hallway I'm going to yell at them to lay down are they over are you the one that messed up the boss yes and I'm about to mess you up too. Now get out of my way, or I swear to God. They all draw weapons. We got orders to kill you and not let you upstairs. From who? <laughs> they smile. The new boss that you killed the old one. <sighs> I 
Okay, I'm gonna kill each one of them one at a time until the last one tells me where the people are. All right. Um, there is one you can reach one in the first turn. Uh, hold on. I might not need to. Are they standing in front of the staircase? Um, they are scattered throughout the main hall. How far into the staircase? They are none of them are on the staircase. How how far am I to or but are they between me and the staircase? Yes. How far but not between, in a direct line? Right. How far behind them is the staircase? Um one of them is across the room from you. Mm-hmm. So one of them's 30 feet. The other one is 30 feet down the hall from you. Right. Just imagine, imagine if I'm running in a straight line to the staircase, right? At what point would I run into where they are? Um, none of them are directly blocking you from the staircase. They are on this. Each one is on a different almost wall of the room. Okay. Uh, do we want to roll initiatives? You guys keep the same ones or re-roll? Uh, I had a 14 before. Uh, you had a 14 and they both had 13s. I'll take a 14. Uh, it's up to you guys. If you guys want to re-roll, then we'll all re-roll. I'm I'm okay with staying. I can keep mine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get the four of them rolled up quick. And that's where the fucking twenty comes, motherfucker. All right. Um, Zent Thug 2 raises his crossbow takes a shot at you that is a 17 plus 2 is a 19 nope no ricochets right off your shield and you're up Uh, I'm going to run in a direction straight towards the staircase okay will I pass any of them um, you can make it to the staircase without engaging in attack of opportunity. Um, it'll take you a double run or a double movement to get to the staircase. All right. I'm going to use, uh, is it a, is it a free action, move action, bonus action to take a potion? It's a, I call it a bonus action as long as you've had it like top of your bag or something like your normal. It's on, it's on my belt. All my potions are on my okay. belt or on my shield. Uh, Okay, well, I'm going to pull down, which, well, the cork is what suspends it. It'll pop the cap out. I'm going to throw a potion back. It's going to be a potion to jump, and I'm going to run and then jump up the stairs as fast as I can. It's three times my normal jump distance. So let me look up. Okay. Um, I mean, it'll take you double movement to actually reach the base of the stairs. Right. Oh, okay, well, then I'll just have the potion prepped and ready. Okay. Okay. Um, Rain, uh, you definitely hear the crossbow bolt. You hear him. There's no way not to hear him run across the floor, but Rain will be right back. Okay, nope. At a moment, we'll take a word from our sponsors. Welcome to Greasy Dave's Grease Trap. Greasy Dave's is your home for all greasy things. You need your butt grease so you can get the fuck out of town. Greasy Daves. Greasy Daves. Greasy you, Daves stops you from greasy saves. You need the door grease so you can light it on fire. Greasy Daves. Mm. <laughs> greasy Daves. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, Fighting buddy. a dog on a leash. Greasy Daves. <laughs> <laughs> and now our 16 family bucket of grease. Uh, two pieces of grease. Guarantee to clog your kidneys or your money back. <laughs> you can cook chicken on it on a Thursday and then rub it on your ass to escape trouble on a Saturday. It's perfect. Dave's Grease, down by the airport near the strip club. Need no lease to buy my grease. You know, it's over by Tawdry Tondra's house, oh, butt shaking. 
Down by the airport. I thought you were going to say House of Tatas and keep the alliteration going there. I, I probably should have. <laughs> nor these comments, nor these things are approved by the FDA. The Gay Strip Club, Walmart. <laughs> Walmart? Walmart. Right. So, uh, Mr. Rain. Uh-huh. Sorry. Uh, he mad dashes through the hallway. It sounds like a lumbering tank going thunk, 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 thunk through the hallway. Right. Um, and crossbow bolt does fire off, misses him, and you are doing your turn. Okay, so he went upstairs. I'm still downstairs. Right? Well, he's at the base of the stairs. Base He'll go upstairs next turn. Gotcha. Um, you see um, only one door across the hall from you that um, enters the room across the hall, plus the four guys in the hallway. Hmm. So we're going to have to get past them. Is that what I'm understanding? Um, most likely. Okay. I mean, you, you can pull the age or you run through the door and shut it behind you and lock it and see what happens. Oh, you can write a note and stick it to one of them. Says, <laughs> do you really trust? You. Do we really trust Adri alone with those armors in the room with a guy locked in a trunk? I mm. said I would help him. <laughs> yeah, help him help you to those armors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need someone to help me carry these. Well, I mean, there there is something to be said for putting some something to slow them down. So if closing the door and locking it gives us a little bit of breathing room it's probably not a bad idea um so yeah that's what i'll do so you're gonna lock the the, the room to the weapons room you guys are in <sighs> or you're gonna try to cross the floor enter the room that you don't know what's on the other side of the door and lock it behind you This is good shit right here. This is this is where the D and D game gets crazy. It's like you slam the door, you turn around, and there's a uh, fucking manticore. It's like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> well, okay. If we stay in here, we're not going to get anything accomplished. No, it, 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 yeah, I take the chance. I get a, I, I dash across. All right, as you dash across, you enter the room. You obvious the door is actually open. Okay. So you enter the room and uh, you close it behind you? Yeah. All right. Do you lock it? Yeah. As you lock it, you turn around, you find you're actually in, in their position. barracks with four others. <laughs> 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 um, you do see another door that's open. Mm -hmm. And through the open door... Um. Is a button that says electric. You floor. can see chests. You can see um, it's a treasure room on the other side of the open door. You, you see. Um, you also kind of catch a smell whiff of uh, the sewers. But no signs of immediate prisoners, nothing like that. Right? No, not here. This is, You can pretty much guess this is probably where they guard the treasure that they've stolen and moved in here. Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I was looking for the restroom. My apologies. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am going to... I'm going to try and really throw them off guard. I'm going to use create water to make it rain inside the room inside a 30-foot cube. This is so weird, right? Okay. Let's talk about it. All right. Um, and if I use that as a second level spell, I can actually create an additional, or, or I can I can basically just start flooding the room. All um, right. <laughs> I guess I'm going to do that. The, the, the room's 36 by 36. I mean, you're you're pretty good here. Yeah, I guess I'm going to do that, and I'm going to step back out into the hallway because that's obviously not the way I want to go. So you're going to start the room flooding, 
and then just slip back out of the hallway. <laughs> Hopefully that that's enough just to make them all stop and wonder what the fuck is going on. Okay. At, um, as you do this, you slip back in the hallway and um, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Yes. Did you hear from side? Holy shit! It's gonna flush the gold to the sewer. So, oh, you hear um a lot of beat feet to the other room, trying to secure the loose treasure and items that are now in threat of being flooded and flushed yeah. down into the sewers. Okay. To make it more difficult to catch. Oh, I bet there are like deeds and ownership writs and stuff like that in there too. And if it gets wet, it could ruin it. That's solid. Yeah. Uh, then once everything gets wet, it gets all moldy and you just can't get rid of that anymore. Oops. So. Uh, we jumped Adri's turn. <laughs> oh, my bad. But doodly Adri, doodly your doodly turn. Doodly doodly. Okay. Just okay. It. Uh, so I said I was going to help get this guy uh, out of this burning building very heroically. Um, so I'm going to uh, throw open the lid of the chest and then I'm going to run to one of those sets of armor and just start chucking the pieces inside with the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he opened the chest, his eyes open like, who that? Who took? Ow! Beam 20, the pound blanket panel. <laughs> 20 pound blanket challenge, bitch. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> So, here hold this for a second yeah you um yeah. yeah you you yeah one full set of armor yeah i mean him and that and that chest is almost full okay and then um he's had two bodies so yep yeah i know uh, yeah and he's yeah he's hurt more <laughs> this is you know That's to help like, keep him in place because the armor's sort of weighing him down did, so. did you uh, do you close the chest on him? Yeah. As you're closing, you you kind of feel a little bounce to it, like it's not wanting to close all the way. Oh my god! <laughs> Let's <gonna> sit on it. <laughs> With your armor, when you sit on it, you hear you're a break, but not like a metal break. More oh. kind of like a bone break, a scream of pain, and then a cl- uh, the the latch click. Like. Oh no, this poor guy. Uh, and then I guess I'm gonna start. Oh no, poor guy. I guess I'm gonna go start stealing stuff now. That's what I have to know. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna like shove this uh, this chest out the door, so you know it's not in the building while the building's on fire. All right, you shoved it out the weapon. <laughs> she kicks back. it down the steps like a UPS driver. <laughs> Boom! Amazon delivery. The thing is, like, I'm gonna leave, and someone's gonna find. The- like a basically an, a package that's on somebody's porch and they're going to take it. <laughs> it's a G.I. Joe and it comes with armor. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and I assume that's everything for my turn. Yeah. And then and then Nate floods it and all right. Um, th- um, three runs up behind Kavir. I don't get a shield bonus for this since he's behind me. Uh, that is a 15 plus uh, four, uh, 19. That's a hit. Catches you for five damage. For how much? Five. Okay. Um, and then that was three. And then one um, one comes after Rain as he's back out. That is a that is a five plus a five or five plus a four is a nine. A nine? That misses you, right, Rain? Okay. Yeah, I was about to say. Wait, was that the damage roll or was that? Sorry, the uh, I'm so used to a squishy rogue. No, 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 no. My AC is thirteen. Hey, also, fuck you a little bit. (laughs) For that. (laughs) You are. I'm used to a squishy rogue, you know, one with only half a set points. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm laughing so hard, my eyes crossed. (laughs) Ah, you don't disappoint. (laughs) And then the. 
the last um, Zen Thug rushes up Kavir and using pack tactics. Oh, thank God. Um, Rachel used doesn't help him at all. On that guy earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he um, misses you completely. Um, a nine does not clear your AC. Oops. Even with advantage, he rolled a nine. So um, back to the top of the round because um, with uh, no, Thug 2 and his crossbow. He clicks to reload it. Seeing that the two were on Kavir, he takes a shot at Rain. And Rain, you lucky bastard. That went from a 20 to a 2. Oh. Oh, so yeah, a 4 does not hit you. Sorry. That's like that Vanna White, like, sorry, you messed, messed up. up. Yeah. So, and now it is Kavir's turn at the base of the stairs. How far does okay the stairs in a straight line or do they like curl? They are in a straight line, I believe. Um, yeah, they are a straight line up and one, two, three, four, five. Uh, they are 25 um feet long and going up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna like leap like a fucking rocket. Uh, potion jump. Just one shot the steps. All right, give me athletics with advantage. Uh, okay. Sorry, Please give me that. a nat 20 so I can like mighty mouse your ass up into the wall. Uh, I got 16, <laughs> 16 on the first one, 19 on the second one. So close. No, yeah, you nail really. it. Those are with a plus five. So Yeah, no, you nail it easily. Um, yeah, you get up there. And as you land... Um, you turn around and you can see yourself with three doors. Any of them open? Um, none of them are open. Uh, I'm going to use my remainder because I get three times my jump, which they say jump is movement speed. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm going to, or I get subtracted from your movement speed. So I'm going to use whatever last chunk I have to throw my body at the door of whatever is closest. Okay. Think of it like a, a frantic dash to just get there. I hit my top foot at the top of the stairs, see some doors, and throw myself through one of them. Or try to, anyway. All right. Um, as you do, you blow yourself through, and you land in a bedroom. Um, in this bedroom, standing before you in utter shock and amaze that you blew through, um, is a half-orc standing there um armored up prepping for battle are you a prisoner <laughs> name is gowlin are you the one who killed Ur urstel yeah that was me i should thank you for my promotion oh i wouldn't thank me just yet i want to like crack my neck as i'm kind of standing like <laughs> oh he points to the open door behind you behind him um you see yourself in a, like a grand bedroom and he motions to the room behind him. He's like, when I'm done with you, I'm going to sacrifice your body to Cyric. Well, I uh, work for a bigger dude. I never heard of Cyric before. That's fine. But I'm certain you've heard of my guy. And rolling initiative for Gowan. Okay. And all right. Um, and that I believe is the end of your turn. Yep. And we go down to Adri on the first floor. Okay. So I have saved that guy. I am a hero. Yes. Okay. Parade, medals, whole nine yards. Next episode on Dragon Ball Z. Excellent. <laughs> um, all right. I guess I should uh, find my friends. All right. You, um, if you look in the hallway, you see Rain now alone with four guard or four of them, and Kavir nowhere to be seen. Okay. Well, I guess I'm helping Rain. Um, um, he's about thirty feet off you with two, uh, two on him, or one's on him, and one has a crossbow aimed at him, and then about. 10, 15 feet up from him 
The other two are the base of the stairs. Okay. Uh, the one that has the crossbow, is he within 90 feet of me? Uh, all of them are within 90 feet of you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to point my uh, my power armor palm. This is different from the acid at the crossbow guy. Uh, and there's going to be like a little gym that sort of like sparks and glows. And then I'm going to shoot lightning out of it and try to hit the guy. This is like that scene from Mighty Ducks where Fulton lines up the shot. And everyone's like, Nate's seeing this. He's getting flashbacks. Everyone's running duck and running for the size is the poor goalie's like the f- Fuck! <laughs> there is a deep, deep fucking hockey thing happening here that I am not comfortable with. Sorry. 25 uh, to hit. I love Mighty Ducks since I was a kid. Um, How much to hit? 25 to hit. Yeah, Jesus. you hit. It counts you as electric- a simple ranged weapon. Oh, yeah, you, you hit hard. Okay. You electrocute so, him and two generations that follow him. So right. normally it deals lightning damage because it acts as a ranged weapon. I get to add my dexterity modifier, uh, but also once on each of my turns, when I hit a creature with this, I can deal an extra D6 of lightning damage. So it's 2D6 plus four. All right. 14. His ancestors felt that. <laughs> Zot. All right, he's still up, but um, you see the electrical charge hit him and begin to like curse through the metal parts of the crossbow up into his teeth, bouncing back from his jaw down to the finger twitches in his hands as the smoke begins to come off of him. Also, that that came from like behind rain, so you might be a little surprised. (laughs) I'm just glad I didn't get wet. Can you imagine doing that shit in the room behind you? Yeah, you start seeing water come out from under that door now. <laughs> I don't. I don't know about that room though. So no, you just see water coming out from under the. Well, I don't know if you're actually looking down the floor. Like, hey, there's water there. Zap. Dick move, by the way. Dick move. But hey, you know what? It's D and D. That's what the game's made of. All right. Um, dick moves. That's right. D and D is made of dick moves. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna be it for my turn. All right, uh, oh, Bob you Seger are... song, working on <laughs> oh, a dick moves. <laughs> and we are on Rain's turn. All right. Well, I j- <laughs> I just saw someone get the bejesus zapped out of them. Um, I've got one on me, right? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna try and um, I'm gonna try and relocate his kidneys to the outside of his body. Alrighty. Um. <laughs> I'm going to contact the Department of His Interior. Oh, are you trying to project thoughts through the microphone? Because I don't yes. think that, I don't think we have the firmware for that. Yeah, that that was what that was. All right, that was natural um, one. Uh, do I get my second attack? He, has, he just gets a second kid that you failed so bad. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm fine. All right. I, um, I, I gently tickle him. Yeah. <laughs> you take two swipes and he easily kind of jumps out of both of them. It's because my it's because the damn daggers are still covered in Erstel's blood. That's why I can't quite get a good grip on them. That acid clean them. That hey. acid's Nate, you're an older gent. Don't worry, it happens to everyone. Yeah. yeah. The, the thug looks at the other three. You guys get the tough one. I get the cake eater. Uh, cake yeah. eater? What? <laughs> I'm now going to castrate this motherfucker. <laughs> I lo- that's, that's a funny way to call someone old, though. <laughs> I mean, this fucking cake eater over here with all his birthdays. <laughs> That's a crazy ass creative way to call someone <laughs> old, though. I know your character is not old, but if he was, that'd be fucking fantastic. Uh, uh, fucking cake eat over here. Yeah, he's gonna be sans testicles here in about thirty seconds. Alrighty. Um, and next up is thug number three. Um, he comes down after Adri and melee. That is a thirteen plus. four. Four is a 17. To me? Yes. No. Okay. 
Misses completely. <laughs> Fucking Iron Man out there. <laughs> right? Yep. And then the other one comes up, checks on the one that was electrocuted, taps him a couple times. You good? All right. I'll go handle the rogue. You'll get zappy. Zappy. He's like, well, I got to face the armor thingy. <laughs> she chose you, man. I didn't choose her. <laughs> right. The armored thingy chose you. It's that morning zoo format. It's like zappy and the cake eater. <laughs> Houston's number one oldies station. Oh, and that is a nope. A 10 does not clear rain. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, a 10 does not clear rain. So, yeah, he comes down and takes a, tries to take a low swing at you and misses. Yeah, I got some cake you can eat, you son of a bitch. It's my ass cake. That's right. <laughs> it's Top red the... velvet because I had burritos <laughs> for dinner. Oh, gross. All right. And then um, Gowan up in the top room with Kavir. Um, yeah, he comes up at you with a... Um, with his morning star in hand. And he begins the first of his three attacks. Three attacks? Woo! That is a 15 plus 8. That is a 23. That's a hit. Second attack is a 3 plus 8 is a miss. And the third attack is a 16 plus 8. Oh. So that is um, 12 damage on the first hit. Oh, my God. Yikes. And then that is a nine plus five, um, 14 on the second. I am unconscious. Uh Uh-oh. And we'll end that turn right there. God, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Um, that dude did 26 damage in, a, in one turn. Woo. That's a lot of damage. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Um... And then we are back to the top. Um, actually, with Kavir, I'm unconscious. Um, are you? Does that mean you're in death saves? I'm in zero hit points. I'm not negative, but okay. Oh, that actually just took you down to zero. Okay. Yeah, I had twenty six. You did twenty six. So it was five, five, and twenty six. Okay. Um. All right, cool. We'll hold there. Um, Adri, you're up. Okay, I have uh, one guy in melee with me. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. I am not specced for melee. Uh, gonna draw my dagger because that's the only melee weapon I have. Uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, stab this guy. All right. Because my lightning thing is a range attack, so I don't think I can, in melee, hit him with it. I would probably provoke an attack of opportunity. Yeah. All right. Dagger it is. Does a 12 hit? Yes, uh, it clears the 11 AC. Oh my wow. god, I was not, I was not ready for that. All right, uh, that is five piercing damage. Okay, let me make sure which one came after you. Okay, five damage. All right. Um, and I guess that's it. All right. Um, Rain, you're up. All right, I'm going to try and castrate this cake eater, motherfucker. Um, oh, that'll, that'll, that'll do it. 23. 
Uh, yes, that hits okay. for sure. And then uh, I'm going to try and get him again. 14, that should hit, right? Yes. All right. So damage is four plus two is six. Plus two is eight. Eight points of damage. Chunk, chunk. Eight total? Um, eight total. All right. And... Trying to see, is there any benefit to... I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. And I'm going to run back over to where Adri is. All righty. And that will be my turn. All righty. The next in line would be the the thug that Adri just knifed. He swings back with the 14. Miss. All right. And the... Okay. That was crossbow boy. And next would be those two. All right. The one on the one on rain. That is a 16 plus four. That is a 20. Yeah, that'll hit all day long. Um, five damage to rain. Okay. And then the other one comes down and moves up on Adri with advantage rolls two 12s so 12 plus 4 is a 16 nope all right upstairs um, the half fork picks up Kavir by the shoulders and begins dragging him back to the back room about this time um, a figure comes into the room and throws a vial that hits the half orc in the face, and acid begins to pour down his face, dropping Kavir. And the figure slides up next to Kavir, reaches into Kavir's belt, pulls out one of his black potions, and shoves it in his mouth. Look, 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 look. <laughs> uh, Kavir, give me a roll for how much you get back from your potion. Should be hold on. I have my uh, thing down here. Only half as much as if it had been administered the other way. Hey, <laughs> no, it's gonna how long it's gonna take to get that armor off to do that. <laughs> uh, no, right. I have a I have a panel on the back. <laughs> <laughs> like those old um, long johns. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But a plate, you have to unscrew it. It has thumb screws. Uh, it's 2D4 plus 2. Let me go ahead and roll that. You're like Ikea furniture. You've got a little Allen wrench taped to the back of you there. Uh, don't talk to me about furniture right now. I just had the worst fucking series of uh, four. <laughs> Woo! Four right. points. Um, You come to, you look up, you see Cedric on... Um, putting a pot all in your mouth on t- um, next to you. Aren't you the entertainer? <sighs> yeah, but I'm keeping you from entertaining the downstairs. So, oh. by the way, um, there's a weird ass chain on your th- neck blowing right now. Um, you may want to get that checked out once we get out of here. Trust me, it's checked out. Attached on the chest. Um, he's blind for a minute, but he may not be long. Okay, well, can I cut his head off or something? Is that a thing? By all means. Uh, I never liked this fucker. You said he's blind? Um, Cedric hit him with acid in the eyes. But it's just acid. You can just wipe that stuff right out. No problem. (laughs) (laughs) Is there a coup de gras here, or or does it just get the hell out of here? Um... Actually, it, while while I'm functional, I'm gonna go ahead and hit myself with uh, with uh, my bonus action. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and get the. Sorry, I got so many things. 
Uh, the coup de draw would not be optional here. He's still somewhat functional. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna do. It'll give me D4 plus my wisdom modifier in healing. That's another five. So I'm up at nine. Oh, that guy hits like a fucking train. Yep. Uh, like, yeah, this guy uh, was Ur- not Ursula's enforcer, but uh, th- yeah, this guy doesn't follow Man's shoe in the black network that normally works in Waterdeep. Well, I have nine hit points, so I'm going to run to the other doors to check to see if there's... Uh... Okay, so you're going back the other way. I'm leaving the room that he's in. Okay. And uh, I'm going to try the other doors. I'm assuming if there was someone in there that was capable of escaping, they would have uh, when they heard the commotion. If they can't escape, then the doors will still be closed. Okay, so you leave the room. I'm leaving Cedric in there with the big motherfucker. Um, And head back down towards the other room. Um, There's two other doors you can go Right. uh, when you head back down. The very next one. Okay. Um... You... Every turn, by the way, assume that I'm taking a healing potion. I, I don't think you can take two in a turn, right? I don't think so. Yeah, so I'm just going to take one standard every action. fucking chance I get. And I have another one of those healing points I'm going to use next turn as well. I'm going to be up to full pretty quick. All and right. I'll come back for dick face. All right. Um, you went, um, Your turn will finish you in the spare rooms to the south. Right. Um, you see the door open. And you see um, one guy in there s- slicing throats of prisoners. He's about 20 feet shy of you right now. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Dragon Heist. Uh, if you would like to support us, please check out our Patreon. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Uh, We have different things there. Character journals, art, bloopers, stuff like that. Our cast includes me as Dr. Kavir the Raven, Rachel as Adri the Highborn Artificer, Nate as Rain Triche, Dockside Officiant, and of course, Dwok as Dr. Midnight and everybody else in the game. Thanks for listening to Freelance Heroism Plays Dragon Heist. And uh, we don't invoice in this group. We'll be back next week with more episodes, so stay tuned. Uh, Rachel? Yeah? How the fuck are you doing? I'm all right. I'm not. Uh, (laughs) Seems like I'm doing better than you. My hair is wet and it's dripping on my neck. Oh, no, I hate that. making me mad. That would make me mad, too. You know how neurotic I am? I have a cigarette in my mouth, right? Uh-huh. And I was so stressed that I reached for a cigarette. <laughs> like, out of the box. Oh.